The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Did you know that the average Christian in America Average. You guys are all the way above average. <laughs> the average Christian in America spends two hours a month in church and is also shaped by 150,000 ads per month. The message around us is immense. You want to improve anything, there's an ad that can help you do that. Body image. I don't know if it's as bad guys for, for us women, but you know, we're always being told we need to find something for those wrinkles and blemishes and extra pounds and everything else. And somebody's got the answer. Need a better pillow so you get a better night's sleep? Somebody's got one of those. Somebody else always has the answer. And so it's not unusual that even Christians start to think that the answers for us are external, are in things, in being better, looking better, having more. The words better and more are part of the culture that has raised us. But today we have this wonderful Sermon on the Mount. They're called the Beatitudes. And they follow up from last week's reading. And if you were here, what happened is in chapter 4 of Matthew, Jesus called four of the disciples. They left him immediately. And then he started traveling through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, Proclaiming the good news of the king, kingdom of heaven and healing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses among the people. And his fame spread throughout Syria. And people suffering from illnesses and painful ailments of all kinds. Those who were demon possessed, those who were epileptic, those who were paralyzed were brought to Jesus and he healed them. And large crowds 
followed Jesus, coming from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and Transjordania. So the Beatitudes start with these words. When Jesus saw the crowds, This is who he proclaimed the Beatitudes to. His primary teachings in the book of Matthew, the crowds, Jewish and Gentiles, many of them in need of healing, many of them who had just been healed by Jesus. He wasn't teaching a Sunday school class. He wasn't teaching insiders. For heaven's sakes, he only had four disciples at this point. Like the Gospel of Luke, in the Gospel of Matthew, the Beatitudes really are his inaugural address. These are the people who are blessed. And a lot of us who live relatively comfortable lives might find ourselves in here somewhere. Certainly we've all mourned, some more than others. But it's not getting a shoehorn and fitting into the Beatitudes somehow. Because this is where a lot of Christians who are not persecuted say, look, I'm being persecuted. See, I'm blessed. Usually those folks aren't the ones that are being persecuted. These are the ones who've been pushed out. Jesus blesses the ones that no one else ever blesses. And that's countercultural in every culture. But because of those 150,000 ads per month, now that's average. Some are above. Some are below. Some choose public television and radio. Most people think that the people who are very blessed are the people that we think Jesus is with. I'm so blessed. I don't care who wins the Super Bowl, somebody's going to point to God and say, Thank you, God. So a cartoon a while back, it's, you know, kind of showed Jesus on a couch in heaven. And uh, while the athlete is pointing to God, Jesus is watching hockey. <laughs> blessed are, or blessed are. Who is blessed by God? The ones that no one else will bless. Our neighbors who are in distress. And this is another one of those passages that has the word righteousness in it. I need to give you another translation. Verse 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Can be read, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. They will have their fill. Or uh, verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And for a lifetime, Christians have thought, well, if I'm just righteous, if I just keep all the Ten Commandments, then 
I'll see the kingdom of heaven. But the alternative, and the one I think is more accurate, is this. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their struggle for justice. The kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, is theirs. It makes a difference. I was reading a sermon by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And the sermon was written in 1957. And it's about loving your enemies, which is the section right after this in the Beatitudes. Hate only intensifies the existence of evil and hate in the universe. If I hit you and you hit me back, and I hit you back and you hit me back and go on, you see, that goes on in ad infinitum. It just never ends. Somewhere, somebody must have a little sense and that's the strong person. The strong person is the person who can cut off the chain of peace, the chain of evil. And that is the tragedy of hate, that it doesn't cut it off. It only intensifies the existence of hate and evil in the universe. Somebody must have religion enough and morality enough to cut it off and inject within the very structure of the universe that strong and powerful element of love. Do you know there was a bill recommended, voted on, but did not pass? thank God, in Iowa this week that would have limited food stamp recipients from receiving fresh meat with their food stamps. The bill, among other things, said they could only get canned meat with their food stamps. And a lot of people voted for it. Earlier this week, I uh, found a statistic, I was going to put it in my sermon, that there were already in the first three weeks of January, 39 mass shootings. I got up this morning, and that number was 51. 51 mass shootings in our country. We have to stand up against hate. Because that's what Jesus did. You've heard it said, and I and the whole world goes blind. Hate distorts the personality of the hater. He writes about the time he was riding a car with his brother in Memphis. And uh, it was night, and they were on a two lane highway, and a lot of people were just choosing not to dim the lights. And you know what it feels like when you maybe give them a little flick so that they go, oh, my, my lights are too bright for you. Sorry. But people just weren't dimming their lights. And his brother said, you know, next time somebody doesn't have dim, I'm just going to leave them on full blast. 
And King said, you can't do that. That will only aggravate them and make things worse. And suddenly there will be too much light and we'll, it'll be dangerous. We'll crash. A small thing, but to not engage in payback. Especially when it's so tempting and so easy. That's a step toward loving your neighbor. And love has within it redemptive power. We have to trust that because we know Jesus. Love has redemptive power. It will be opposed. Jesus went to the cross because of hate. But his message of redemptive love lives on today because it's so profound. Mahatma Gandhi discovered that. You can stand against injustice without hating the unjust. You can still love them. Martin Luther King discovered that. Dietrich Bonhoeffer discovered that. It's not weak to stand for justice and love neighbor. It may be one of the strongest things a Christian can do. Jesus did not choose hate against the power of Rome. And I've talked before, Rome had some of the cruelest and most powerful weapons ever invented, and they used them. Jesus came and said, I will not use this method. Neither will I hate the Roman Empire. Guess what, friends? Rome fell. Because hate against hate against hate against hate against hate everything. Every day we have choices to make. Rome fell. Jesus lived. Jesus lives. But it's not a cheap hope. It is a hope grounded in the most profound love that's ever been on this planet. A love that does not hate, a love that does not dehumanize. <coughs> King had told that story at Howard University. And uh, he added to the story about his brother in the car. Oh, my friends, it may be that Western civilization will end up destroyed on the highway of history because we failed to dim our lights. And we have the greatest light of love right there. Now is the time to let the light of Jesus shine. Shine brightly. 
shine to tell the world that the ones who are blessed are the ones the world doesn't care about, but that Jesus sees them. Jesus sees you. Calls you beloved. Calls you blessed. Live in that peace. The peace that passes all understanding.